Singe is the Chaos God of Magic, Mischief, and all things trickery, so it makes sense that they'd be one of the trickier factions to face in both campaign and battle. Whether they're teleporting around the campaign map or dropping countless spells onto the battlefield, Singe can give you a lot of trouble. So today, let's go through how to beat Singe in Total War Warhammer 3. This faction was voted for by the Discord, so if you'd like to vote on who's next, you can join the server through the link in the description. Now, let's begin with the campaign. So when you're playing as Singe, you have a wide array of mechanics at your disposal, but when you're up against them, it's a lot more tame. The AI can't really use most of the changing of the ways, so you don't really have to worry about that. But aside from that, they still have a couple of tricks to keep you on your toes. The teleport stance will likely be unlocked much later into the game, but once it comes online, keeping track of Sinch armies will become quite the challenge. It functions very similarly to the underways, meaning they can cross large distances without worrying about terrain constraints. This means that they'll easily be able to outrun a faction that doesn't have access to this type of stance and avoid battles they want no part in pretty easily. The usual advice for countering these sorts of stances applies here too. Use mind games to bait the AI into moving where you want them, so leave a weak settlement exposed of an army hidden nearby. AI hates the player's guts so much that they won't be able to resist dashing over to that settlement, and once they move and their turn ends, you can move in for the kill. Another good tidbit about the teleportation stance is that it costs Winds of Magic, meaning seat champs that have just used this to move will have lower levels of Winds of Magic to take into their next battle. So if you can manage to attack them directly after they move, you'll be going up against them with a lot less magic at their disposal, and as you'll see in the battle section, that will make things much easier. Staying with the topic of Winds of Magic, we have their Winds of Magic manipulation. This is a mechanic that allows them to move the Winds of Magic between any provinces they own, effectively putting the magic wherever they want it. What this normally means is their armies will usually be stocked up with a full capacity for Winds of Magic, making them a lot more powerful to go up against. There isn't really a way to counter this outside of battling them outside of their own lands whenever possible, and striking when you know their levels are low, as we just mentioned. Outside of this, you can't really stop them from loading up on Winds of Magic, so you can't really do much to counter this one, but you can take advantage of it. All this mechanic does is increase the strength of the magic in an area, so if you move your armies into the same area, they'll also be filling up on that sweet, sweet magical goodness. So you may not be able to drain their magical power, but you can at least raise yours to match it, provided you're playing as a faction that can make use of magic with enough casters to properly utilise it. Now the last thing to worry about in the campaign is Siege Corruption. As usual, this will cause attrition to any non siege armies and control issues to any non siege settlements, but it also comes with a couple of unique effects just for them. All hostile armies will have a great chance of Winds of Magic strength decreasing, effectively meaning your armies will have less magic to use in battles. All of your casters will also have a 15% increase to the chance of a miscast, meaning overcasting spells becomes incredibly risky, as a couple of botched casts can put your mage in the grave, or pretty close to it. As well as all of these effects for non siege armies, they also give themselves some pretty hefty bonuses. Their Winds of Magic have a much higher chance of increasing in strength, and all of their ranged demon units have bonus ammunition. Both of these can cause you some serious grief in combat, so cleansing the land of corruption should be a high priority to weaken them as much as you possibly can. You can do this via Lord Skills, as well as building in any provinces where corruption is high. Chances are you won't be able to clean up without taking or raising their settlements, so just be ready for a whole lot of magic and missiles in your first couple of battles. Speaking of which, let's move on to the battle section, and as usual, I think this is where Siege poses a lot more of a threat. Since the Champions of Chaos DLC, their roster is absolutely stacked with demons and corrupted humans, ready to ruin your day in a variety of ways. But before we can get into their roster, we need to talk about something that affects every single unit they have, and that's the barrier. This little tree to their mechanic means every single unit in their roster has a shield that you need to break through before you can deal any damage to their actual HP bar. This is literally wasted damage since it does nothing to really slow them down, and if you don't keep up the pressure it just regenerates after a short break, meaning any damage you did was literally worthless. Now their roster is balanced around this barrier somewhat, so it's not like once you get through the barrier there is elite as some non-barrier units, but still, it's like having a level of regen that they can never run out of, no matter how long the battle goes on for. So there's no real way to counter this per se, since it's always going to work and isn't weak to any particular form of damage, instead the way to counter barrier units is to never stop the pressure until they're dead or broken. This means once you're in combat with their units, you really need to stick there until they're done for, otherwise they're just going to come back again with all the extra HP to chip away at. This makes their ranged units into quite a pain in the ass since cycle charging is far less effective as they just gain half the barrier back by the time you make impact again. But if you leave cab in combat with them, you run the risk of allies coming to the rescue, and even if they don't, most of their ranged units aren't awful in melee, making them a real pain in the ass to take out. So just do your best to focus down their units until they're shattered or wiped out, as that barrier will always come back and make them a little bit harder to finish off, no matter what you're attacking them with. If you can punch through it, most units will be easy enough to take out normally, it's just getting through it that can be an issue. And if it wasn't clear, this barrier only regenerates once they stop taking damage, so as long as you keep attacking them with something, it won't come back. One other thing that the entire roster has access to is magical damage. There isn't really much you can do or sometimes have to do to counter this. If your faction has units with high armor that don't rely on physical resistance, uh, you should be just fine. If you are using units that focus on physical resistance, then probably don't do that if you have the option. There isn't really a counter for this one other than bringing units that aren't affected by it, so just do that as much as you possibly can. 
I've already touched on the missile unit, so I should probably finish what I've started. As I've said, they all have the barrier and are halfway decent in melee, but of course their main function is where they have the most damage. Their missile roster may be small, but it has a massive impact right from the get-go. From Pink Horrors all the way to Exalted Flamers, they have enough damage to crush your troops if you aren't careful. If you have them, bringing shields against Siege will go a long way to keeping your troops alive and confident. Their damage is crazy and only gets better as the game goes on, but they do have one downside. Most of their damage carries a fairly high risk of friendly fire. The Horrors aren't too bad with the worst normally being a bit of splash damage from their lightly explosive projectiles, but the Flamers can go disastrously if positioned incorrectly. Try to fight on terrain that forces Flamers to fire onto their own troops if you can, but above all else just stop them firing on your own units. Their damage output is so insanely high that a single barrage can crush most infantry in seconds. Don't let them get off clean shots and aim to shut them down as soon as you can as that damage really is crazy. As for taking them out, I know I said that Cav will struggle, but honestly, what else is there? If you can get strong melee infantry to them, then go for it, but chances are Cav will be way easier to get off flanks. So, find the best sustained combat Cav that you can, and send them around the back to take them on. If it's a fair fight, they should be able to win, but if other units come to help, then you're probably going to struggle, so just keep them busy for as long as possible, and use the distraction to move your front line further into their army. Hopefully, by the time the Cav fall or run away, you can get other units in to clean up what's left. The other area of the roster you want to be worried about with Siege is the Demons and Monsters. They have a decent sized roster of the things and each of them is designed to ruin your day in a variety of ways. You have the Mute Lift to deal damage on the front lines, the Soul Grinder slinging shots from the back, as well as the changes of ways for even more melee power as well as casting potential. As usual, the counters for monsters are anti-large damage and as much ranged as you can throw at them. Almost all of their late game monsters have some decent armor and a large hitbox, so I'd prioritize armor piercing range damage regardless of the fire knack, since they should be able to get shots off no problem. I'd prioritize taking down major threats one by one to make sure they're dealt with before the barrier comes back. Plus, most of their monsters have some nasty effects for nearby enemies, so getting rid of them as soon as possible can't possibly hurt. One good thing about their monsters is the fact that a lot of them are demons, so once their leadership breaks, they start to fall apart instead of run away. It's not all of them, for some reason the Mutalith isn't, but those that are demonic will be totally dealt with as soon as you break their leadership, so focusing on this aspect with spells, abilities, and other leadership sapping tactics like surrounding them in melee is a great way to eliminate major threats quickly. Take down their leadership, and they'll pretty much get rid of themselves. Speaking of leadership, we come to the last power of Siege that I want to talk about, and that is of course their casters and spells. The God of Magic really lives up to his name, as of all the demons, Siege has the best casters by far. Their lords can be giant monsters, also have access to the lore of Siege, which is incredibly devastating. It has tons of spells for damage and chaos drop all over the battlefield, with their no doubt endless supply of Winds of Magic. Even their cultists can use the ever-powerful Lore of Fire, and who can forget the Changer of Ways monsters and their ability to use spells despite being non-character units. The bottom line is Siege has a ton of magical units capable of slinging countless spells straight to your troops. Now, to counter this, you're a little bit limited. Sure, you can use strategies like spreading your units out to limit the impact of spells, but as for actually countering their magic, you don't have a ton of options. Some laws are good at countering enemy casters, one of them actually being the Lore of Siege itself, but this isn't a guarantee in every faction. My best advice would be the same as the monsters. Just focus down these large threats one by one until they're taken out of the fight. If you can focus down their lords and take them out before they can cast a spell, you're saving yourself from any magical value that they might bring. Do the same with the cultists, changes, and any of the other casters that they might bring. Whether it's by missiles or sending lords and heroes in to fight them, just do something to take them down as fast as you can to limit how much value they can bring to their army. And until they're taken care of, keep an eye out for incoming casts and move your units to avoid the impact. So if I was going up against Siege and preparing for the worst case scenario, this is what I'd build. Ideally for the front lines, you want something super tough with shields against that range damage, maybe some charge resistance to counter all those large troops, and maybe some anti-large bonus if you can manage it. Since I'm playing as the Empire for that middle of the road faction, I have none of that, so I'm going with great swords. Worse defense than halberds, yes, but against missiles, that armor is way more important. For ranged infantry, I'm going all handgunners. The armor piercing is going to punch through whatever you put in front of them, so I'm going to use them to focus down key targets like monsters, lords, and heroes, one at a time until they're totally out of the fight. If you need to focus on their infantry, then they will need to get an angle, but in my opinion, you have a whole list of other units you should be focusing on first before infantry, so it's not really worth worrying about. I'm also bringing a couple of armor piercing artillery pieces. Their soul grinders have mad range, so getting your handgunners close enough is going to take some time. These lads can engage them from a massive distance and start putting damage on early to shut them down as soon as possible. Basically, use them the same as handgunners to focus one target down at a time. Just now, enjoy some longer range. For the back lines, we're bringing Fighting Cav and Classic Empire. I'm going with some anti-large and some not. Exalted Flamers are classed as large targets, so that extra damage actually does come into effect. Other than that, we're going to use these guys to flank around and shut down their ranged troops as fast as we can. Other units might come to help, but as long as their ranged aren't firing, these guys are doing their job. So keep them in and get them support as soon as you easily can to keep them alive. Lastly, for leadership, I went with an Arch Lector, mainly for the buffs that they bring to allied units, but any sort of tanky fighting lord is going to work here. They want to be used to keep key targets busy like enemy lords and monsters and allow ranged troops to pick them apart at their leisure. Focus on tanking over damage no matter what you pick, and if they can, flying is a decent shout for extra mobility. 
I also went with a caster and I chose Shadows because, well, you know, it's one of the best laws in the entire game, and also it has some great spells against Siege in particular. I did a lot of buffing to my cap to take down their ranged troops faster, as well as debuffing their key monsters to make them easier to take out quicker. The damage is nice too, but only if you use it on units that are already taking damage, otherwise the barrier will just eat everything up and it'll come right back a second later. And that is just about everything I have on how to beat Siege. Let me know if you have any other tips or questions in the comments below. Like, subscribe if you want to know how to beat more factions, then check out this video on how to beat the High Elves.